what's up, it's Chainsaw Jetta, and it is currently 10 degrees outside. It's a little chilly. We've got three inches of snow, and it's a beautiful day. The sun's out, the sky is shining blue, and I know three inches is not a lot of snow, but we got some snow. We want to have some fun, so let's get bundled up and have some fun outside. Let's get ready. Okay. Oh, let's go outside. So we're outside and it is so bright. I'm definitely going to be squinting in part of this video, so I sorry about that. I want Ben to pull me around on the four wheeler with a sled because I think that would be so fun. I remember as a little kid. We would go up to my grandparents' house and grandpa would be like pulling us on the tractor and dad would have his full wheeler and we'd be all having fun playing out in the snow. So that's what we're going to do. Um, there's a couple issues though. One, we have a very old full wheeler and sometimes it doesn't really like to start in the cold weather. So we need to start up the full wheeler and Ben is looking for a rope and I can't get my fingers out of this mitt. Ben's finding a rope and a sled. Past couple of years, we haven't had like a whole lot of good snow. And this time, the snow stuck. Anytime that it snowed this year, it kind of like washed away within like a couple hours or within that day. But oh, Ben found the sled. Which one do you want? Oh, uh, I don't know. This will be better if you're going around a turn. Yeah. This one's the one to go straight. You're gonna flip but this over. This one has a little seat. It does have a little seat. I'll take the circular one. Are you gonna ride the sled too? Am I gonna pull you? I don't know, last time you pulled me in something, I almost died. No! Shake it around. I don't know if shaking it does anything. <laughs> I don't know, I just remember doing that all the time. Get the turbo heater out. Yeah, we might need to turbo just blast her a little bit with some heat. Okay, new plan. We think we need to take and grab the turbo heater from the shop and bring it over to the full wheeler and give the full wheeler some life. Hopefully that will help it. I don't really know, but we're gonna try it. I really hope it works because I really want this to be a fun day. Jenna, Ben, where did you get these stylish new winter outfits? Well, these aren't new. <laughs> They're pretty old. And Ben and I actually like to go skiing and we might get out the skis. I don't know, there's not a whole lot of snow out. It would be fun if Ben could pull um, me around on the four wheeler if we can get it started. Commence the heat. Did I turn it on? I don't know. Did you turn on? Do you think it's gonna work? I hope, because I clean these sleds, so they better work. That's the sole reason? <laughs> blow up <laughs> just know I love you okay
Doesn't sound promising. Does it need gas? Does it have gas? Yeah, I filled it up last night. So I think what we need to do is grab the battery charger, charge this guy up a little bit, and then try it again. So we've pulled the full wheeler out and it's kind of more in the sun and we are charging the battery a little bit more and we're gonna give it a you shot. always try and manually start it. <laughs> that seems really hard. It's definitely not fun. We watched a YouTube video about there's a button on Hondas. Yeah. Polaris. Yeah, but is there a button? Was Polaris nice enough to put a button? That's the oil, the oil dipstick. There's no button. It's a press. Does this start? Yeah. It's right here. Polaris so it's pretty old 24 years old and if you guys have a Polaris if you guys want to yeah I don't know give us any pointers on how to start it up in single digit weather that would be great because we got a couple more months of this and we really like riding this full wheeler so like I said before, if you guys have any suggestions on how Ben and I can get the full wheeler running in the cold weather, that would be super, super great. Any feedback or advice that you guys have would be much, much appreciated because we love riding that full wheeler any time of the year. So yeah, but my parents are coming over here. Dad is going to help me figure out a couple of my battery saws so I can stay productive the rest of the winter. And yeah, so. Let's get to it with that. New guest appearance for the video. We have my dad and my mom. They come to say hi, come to visit. And dad right now is hooking up this DIY invention for my battery saws. Because as you guys know, whoa, you guys are really zoomed in. Hi bud. As you guys know, the battery saws that I use is the MSA 140 and then the MSA 120 and both of them have dime tip bars and I need something that's going to block out my carvings. Who's the man to help us out? This man right here. Well, we we were just going to try to put a washer here because steel bar don't really fit on this Makita saw. So we're going to rig it up anyways, but it probably would work if we had the chain on it. So what we're thinking is not putting on the case of the Makita and just put a couple washers on the outskirts of the bar and this gets get all everything. clogged up with sawdust anyways. You don't really need it. Where's your this other is just bar? for your Let's safety. Who needs Let's this? Let's try the other bar because this one needs some. So are we gonna be TikTok famous? Huh? This is going on YouTube. Oh, YouTube? <laughs> Not TikTok, yeah. Oh, yeah, don't forget to look up my account, Buckmaster1671. It's got <laughs> old videos of Jenna on there when she was a little girl. All right, this is how you do it. Save off that little bad spot where you fill it in. And make it... I really like this hammer. Buy it. Magnifiers on to do this. 
and you just touch it again. So what did you just do? Well, when you throw a chain on these drivers, it, it puts a thing in it. And it mushrooms out a little bit, and then it doesn't go around the bar nice. So you put it on there again. And, uh, you sand off those hard edges that I created. Well, and it, when you throw a chain, it does it. See how it's not going around nice? Yeah. So that happens because of... Because you threw a chain. But I've noticed that, like, even these joints get, like, oh. locked up. Oh, yeah, they do. Like, the bottom of this is a tie strap that holds this chunk together. Yeah. It, it starts to get funky. If we had a brand new chain... Not super good, but I think oh, no. the more you run, oh, you know what? We should have checked this oil hole, make sure that it's cleaned out enough because a lot of the oil is not going through there. It's smoother already. I would say, run it. Run it. He says, run it. it, it, it we put the cover back on, but it was probably it is probably this one because this is an Oregon chain, and Nikita uses Oregon chain, I think. All right, we changed up the plan. We went with the original bar and chain. It fits with, like a glove. It, imagine that, huh? Yeah, but you could probably put this one back on there, but I don't think the oilers are lining up just right. But Right. That's so. another time. Do you want to explain to them why the bar is upside down? Like why you should do that? Oh, you should rotate it now and then because, uh, I don't know, just so you're not advertising Makita straight <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you could, because the bar will wear on one side more than the other. So flip it once in a while. When you do, make sure you change your chain so it's not backwards because if you flip this over, the chain's backwards. So, yeah, it won't cover shit that way. Change it over. And you should dress your sprockets, the ends of your, your bars up, for sure, because they'll wear right there and it'll get stuck in the wood as you're cutting. So, take the sander, take the chain off. Dress your bars. That's right. Dress, dress your, your bars. Sprockets. Dress them up. Yeah, Make them look them up, pretty. And then you can take them out. Bye! Thanks for coming! See ya! See ya!